God does open our eyes to see when we ask him. He does fulfill a mission because he is enough and we don't need to be. And he will do what he says, even if it looks different than we thought it was going to look. Hey everyone, this is Jen of Ayanetta. And today I just want to talk to you really quick about three keys to impacting widows and orphans right where you are. Yesterday, I was uh, shopping at a store and I had my three-year-old and my two-year-old and my 13-year-old with me. Um, I got to the checkout and if you're a mom, you understand how crucial it is to maintain some semblance of order when you're at the checkout with two toddlers. And um, I was waiting to get through and just waiting and waiting and there was some kind of like just a jam. And I looked up and there were three people before me and the person in the very front was this gray-haired lady. And she was looking down, she was kind of somber her face was just kind of non-expressive and she kept on trying to shove her bank card into the machine and I looked and I was like what is going on does she not know how to work this machine and before you know it a manager came over and whispered got down in her face and kind of just whispered and um, I just kind of got this fire and I passed the people in front of me and I looked up at the cashier and I said what in the world is going on like does she just not have enough money and the cash register lady said, no, um, she doesn't have enough money and not even thinking and not because I'm great or I just, you know, have this super, it was out of this, um, um, you know, just this holy perception, but I just put my card in, paid for her groceries and got outside and I saw that she, there was that nursing home, like a van sitting outside of the grocery store. And what I realized um, was that she was going to get to that, that, a van and she was going to get ready to go back to her nursing home and she was going to be the only one without groceries and i realized that they're like in that um in that aisle out of my frustration and my desire to just get my toddlers home and out of that grocery store um, god was using my frustration to meet the needs of this lady and I don't know about you, you know, I love big vision and big ministry. Um, I love the nations and, and church ministry, but sometimes it's harder for me to see the small need that's right before me. Um, I uh, love Mother Teresa that she says, if we judge people, then we have no time to love them. Not all of us can do great big things, but we can all do small things with great love. So how do we meet the needs of the widows and the orphans and those that are around us? Number one is we just need to ask God to open up our eyes. And I know so many of you guys do this on a daily basis and you're so much better at it than I am. Just to say, God, what is your need? What is the need that you want me to fulfill today? When I pulled into the parking lot of the grocery store, you know, not even thinking, I was thinking about God, just get me out of the grocery store with two toddlers without anyone screaming. But I said, God, you know what? Can you just use me? Use me this hour and a half and um, get me home and have everything go well. And what I didn't realize was there was going to be this lady with a need and that God would use that simple, um, really kind of a selfish prayer for his glory and for his good. I love Jesus because he always saw the need. He didn't just see the big need, the mass need. He saw the individual and the personal need. Um, when there was a little tiny man, Zacchaeus, way up in a tree, he didn't just see him or see his need. He fulfilled his need. When a lady was grabbing at his cloak and the lady with the blood disorder, you know, I'm sure that there were a lot of big and important people that were surrounding him at that moment. But instead, he turned around and he looked at the lady and he saw her need. And he didn't just see her need, he met her needs. Sometimes it's easier not to see people's needs around us because when we see better, we know better. And when we know better, often we're called to do better. Point number two is once we see, we're often called to risk for um, risk our own comfort, our own time, and our own resources. In 2005, um, I was with a friend and we were uh, garage sale shopping and she had a friend and with her, there was this two-year-old little girl. This little girl was adorable. She had brown curly locks and the biggest brownest eyes you've ever seen. 
at the end of our time together that day, I came to learn that this two-year-old little girl, her name was Hope, was going to need a foster home, a foster home and a foster placement. At the time, we weren't licensed to be foster parents, but I went home to my husband and I said, honey, this little girl, she's perfect. She looks like our family and she's just adorable. Can we please get licensed to be foster parents? Well, we did. We got licensed then and um, it's been... Um, 14 years later, we've had a couple dozen kids and we've adopted four kids out of care, but it all started because of hope. Um, let's see. Um, but at the same time, I think that we can struggle to risk. We struggle to step out and see for two different reasons. And one is because we think maybe we're just not enough. Maybe we can't meet that need. And what I've learned over all these years of ministry is that, yes, I cannot meet this need. I am not enough. But with God, all things are possible. And with him by our side, we can do whatever he has called us to. We are more than equipped and we are more than enough with him. The second reason is I think sometimes we think God's not enough. Like maybe God, the enemy just gets in our head and says, you have walked this road before. You have followed where um, God has led you. And it has not led to the place that you thought it was going to go. And God just led you to a dead end. And so we question the character of God. And we think that he might not be faithful to meet our every need. Luke 6, 38 in the Amplified says this, Give and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over with no space left for more. For with the standard of measurement you use when you do good to others, that measure will be used back to you in return. God is enough and he is faithful despite what we are lacking. And point number three, I just want to close with this, is that um, he is responsible for the results. So that little girl, Hope, um, after about nine months, we got licensed and ready to take our first placement. And what we learned is that little girl, Hope, ended up going back to a bio family. So Hope never came to our home. Um, that little girl never came and we never got to love on her and do what we really set out to do to get licensed to take care of her. But over the years, as I've looked back and as God has, op God has opened my uh, spiritual eyes to see, I realized through every little kid that's come into our home, abused or, or hurt or whatever their story is, that God has given us hope. He's given us hope and grace for their story through every circumstance and every trial that we've sat through, every relationship with birth parents and bio parents. He's given us hope. And so hope did come. It just didn't come like we thought it was going to. And so I love that because sometimes when we serve God, we think it's going to turn out a certain way. We have this ideal, or at least I know I do, that it's going to look this way or um is the end result will be like we think it's gonna, but God never ever fails on his promises. He promised to give me hope and he did. It just didn't look like I thought it was gonna look. And maybe you feel like that today. Maybe you feel like God might have failed you or you've done something and there's, um, it hasn't turned out like you've thought. But I just want you to be encouraged that God often does the unexpected. He does the unpredictable and, un and often he does unlikely things in unconventional ways that he always fulfills his promises, but it doesn't always look like we want it to. John Piper says this, that life is wasted if we do not grab the grass, the glory of the cross, cherish it for the treasure that it is and cleave to it as the highest price of every pleasure and the deepest comfort in every pain. What was once foolishness to us, a crucified God must become our wisdom and our power and our only boast in this world. God does open our eyes to see when we ask him. He does fulfill a mission because he is enough and we don't need to be. And he will do what he says, even if it looks different than we thought it was going to look. So I just want to close and pray with you guys really quick. God, we just thank you, Lord, that you are faithful. You are dependable. You are a rock and you never, ever fail us, God. Lord, I ask today, Lord, if there are women out there who... um feel hesitant or scared or fearful to step out in faith, Lord, where you're calling them to. God, I ask that you would just show them the next step, God, that you would give them courage, Lord, that um, they would seek you in not just the big areas of ministry of their lives, Lord, but even with their children, even in their homes, Lord, even as they go to the grocery store, do what seems like a simple mundane task, God. I pray that they would feel your presence and you would open the door to opportunities so that we might be a witness to you, God, and that people might see your 
your glory and your goodness in and through us every single day, God. Thank you for your love and for your faithfulness, Lord. We just praise you. We lift you up, Lord, and we just give you glory right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.